We've got about six minutes until the bell. Let's talk about tomorrow's inflation print, what we learned from this morning's data. Joining me, Kathy Jones, Chief Fixed Income Strategist at Schwab Center for Financial Research. Uh, Kathy, let's start with this morning. Take me through your interpretation, what we saw from GDP. I guess a little less so jobless claims, as that's been pretty consistent. Numbers were interesting. And in now these are revisions to the first quarter numbers. So it's a second look at the first quarter that we've gotten. And what we saw that was probably stood out the most was that that kind of core GDP number that strips out some of the more volatile categories like inventories and exports um, showed a slower pace of growth than the previous estimates. So that, that slowed down to about 2.8% which is still pretty healthy, but uh, not nearly as strong as the 3% plus that we saw in the first estimate. So that was the first kind of clue that we're seeing a slower pace of consumption than we have than we previously thought we saw in the first quarter. And then the GDP um, PCE was revised down a little bit. Again, these are small downward revisions, but the overall print was downward uh, in terms of most of the revisions. And I guess the other piece of data that came out that probably didn't get as much attention was the retail inventories number for April. And what we saw there was a pretty good jump in retail inventories for the month. And it tends to be somewhat volatile, so we'll wait to see the trend. But that does seem to suggest that we're seeing why some of these retailers are cutting prices, because apparently things aren't selling as fast as they thought, because prices are too high. They're cutting prices to try to move some of this inventory. So you kind of put it all together and you say, OK, first quarter was not as robust as we thought. Uh, now we look into some of the, the second quarter data and, you know, we'll see confirmation or we won't see confirmation of those trends. Uh, really a great point, especially there on the inventory is super helpful to connect with what we're seeing from the earnings here. It makes a lot of sense because it's extended basically to even kind of average and lower price uh, retailers have had to just clean stuff out. So uh, we've got a little bit of a slow down, but does some of that spending shift into other areas for the summer, Kathy? Is it possible, you know, the travel, the services, hospitality stuff kind of rubs us back up over the next three months? Well, it's certainly possible. Um, now, we do have seasonal adjustment factors that should account for the seasonal swings in, in the way people spend their, their money. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see when those figures come out. We do see... Um, <clears throat> Sort of a miscalculation, I noticed that American Airlines with the business travel versus uh, the, the non-business travel, uh, we'll have to just see what the consumer is feeling like. You know, the sentiment numbers are really perplexing because on the one hand, you know, people are concerned about a lot of things and have sort of a negative view of the future. On the other hand, the recent sentiment numbers picked up quite a bit and said their current conditions are good. So uh, I'm not sure where that's going to leave us going forward. I tend to think that what happens is we continue to see kind of steady spending shifts around a little bit uh, in terms of this composition. But still, as long as people have jobs, they'll probably continue to spend some money. So I'm not looking for a substantial slowdown in economic growth in the second quarter, just kind of continuing sort of ebb and flow uh, at a lower level than we've seen over the past year or so. Okay, pretty uh, solid bond rally for a re revision, uh, but then we also had a pretty solid bond sell off in the week prior. Uh, give me a quick thought going into tomorrow for inflation, Kathy. What's your baseline? Does any of this skew one way or the other in terms of what to expect? Well, I think there are a lot of hopes that we'll see a soft PCE number and core PCE number tomorrow because that allows us to think, okay, inflation is, instead of going sideways or edging up a little bit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to resume its downward trend. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, if it doesn't materialize, obviously the bond deals can bounce back up and we can push out any expectations for Fed easing. But should be a pretty good number. We're just waiting for those rent figures to kind of flow through on PCE and bring that core number down. Okay. So uh, some hope here that maybe uh, we could calm the waters a little bit. Uh, it seems like that's the message today, but uh, numbers will determine that in the morning. Thanks, Kathy. Really uh, helpful for us in connecting also some of the stock themes today for the retailers.